Tonight, we're looking local at loads of lovable live performances. Moving beyond the Palmetto State, why Palm Springs is even hotter than usual this time of year. And of course, what's an entertainment show without some tea? Zane Heinlein is in the studio with a legal case that has nothing to do with piracy, but everything to do with pirates. We have all that and more tonight on The Buzz. Hello and welcome to The Buzz. I'm Tata Miller. And I'm Alona Donovan. Let's get into it. Looking locally, this Saturday is absolutely packed with performances and odes to the arts. But I've hand-plucked a few that I think all of us Gamecocks will enjoy. Ann Brody's Carolina Ballet is on tour performing the iconic show Cinderella. The ballet brings a dance into the classic tale of the servant-turned-princess who battles evil stepmothers and meets mystical fairy godmothers. And I know we've all read the tale, but have you seen it done in tutus and on point? You can find tickets at the Township Auditorium or Ticketsmarter.com. If you're feeling a bit nostalgic, the Columbia Children's Theater will be performing a childhood favorite, Junie B. Jones. This group has turned the classic book series into a musical, following everybody's favorite sassy first grader on her adventures through school. You can find out more information about the show and tickets at harbisontheater.org. Calling all patrons of the arts and food aficionados, we're bringing you a classy, entertainment-filled event on the historic cobblestones of Columbia to wrap up your weekend. This Sunday, starting at 4.30 p.m., Live on Lincoln invites everyone to enjoy local performers and a wonderful meal, courtesy of Blue Marlin, right on Lincoln Street. This unique outdoor experience will feature groups like the Columbia City Ballet, Brooke Chamber Orchestra, Cola Jazz, South Carolina Philharmonic, and our very own U of SC Dance and Opera performers. Tickets are available for tables of two or four, and all proceeds will go towards funding the participating organizations who, amidst the pandemic, have struggled to recover. You can find more information at the Coger Center for the Arts here on campus or eventbrite.com. You heard what's going on locally. Let's talk about a, a bit about what's buzzing beyond us. Just in case you didn't know, it's officially Coachella season. Coachella is a yearly musical festival near Palm Springs. Guests venture into the desert to watch their star-studded performances from their favorite artists. This year, headliners include Harry Styles, Billie Eilish, Swedish House Mafia, and The Weeknd. Other names like Daniel Caesar, Baby Keem, Megan Thee Stallion, 21 Savage, Doja Cat, and Maggie Rogers are also performing. The first festival weekend was this past week, and fans could not stop talking about the guests of Harry Styles and Billie Eilish. The king himself, Harry Styles, brought out the queen herself, Shania Twain, and they performed a surprise duet that left the audience speechless. Billie Eilish, who is Coachella's youngest ever headliner, invited Khalid and John, da Damien Albarn, who is the Blur and the Gorillaz frontman. Upset about missing these iconic performances, well, if you have thousands of dollars to spend, Coachella's second weekend starts this Friday, and tickets only start around $400. <laughs> now, one person who isn't performing at Coachella is ASAP Rocky. As ASAP was returning from a vacation on Wednesday, he was detained by police. The LAPD's press release said it was in connection with a shooting that occurred in November of 2021. They said, quote, an argument escalated and resulted in a suspect firing a handgun at the victim. The victim sustained a minor injury from the incident and later sought medical treatment. The suspect has been identified as 33-year-old Rakeem Mayers, also known as the artist ASAP Rocky, end quote. Representatives of the music artist have yet to comment on the situation. And I'm just so confused. How did it take them from November 2021 until now to figure out that I was ASAP? I don't know. And it's a little, it's a little suspicious if I do say so myself. Oh, I think so too. That's all we have for your entertainment news, but don't go anywhere. After the break, Zane Heinlein will be sipping and spilling some serious tea. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Zane Heinlein. Let's get into some legal tea. Now recently, actor Johnny Depp and ex-wife Amber Heard are in a legal case. Famous actor Johnny Depp, most notable from Pirates of the Caribbean and Alice in Wonderland. They are in a defamation case against former wife Amber Heard. Some background information, Heard originally established a domestic violence case and restraining order against Depp back in 2016. 
However, Depp obviously was denying such claims. And now recently there is a 50, 50 million defamation damages against Heard in the recent course. And the, court is, the course is also being live streamed online for anybody to watch. Now the catalyst for this was the 2018 op-ed article in the Washington Post that Amber Heard wrote that kind of depicted Johnny Depp as an abuser. Celebrities are also expected to testify during this trial that is taking place in Fairfax, Virginia and through a six-week uh, six period. Actors such as James Franco, Paul Bettany, and Elon Musk are expected to testify. Now that's all I have for today. On, that's all I have for tonight, but don't go buzzing away just yet. Tatum and Alona are talking about why we don't have a show last week. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now I know it was a hard week for everyone last week because you didn't have a new episode of The Buzz to watch, but we promise that it was for a good reason. Me, Zane, and Callista went and covered the U of SC's annual drag show, Birdcage, and put together a package for all of you to enjoy. Here's a sneak peek. We've seen an increase over the past few years in LGBTQ representation, and um, Sometimes we feel like we're getting in a really cool, safe spot, and I think USC is definitely doing a lot to get there. Um, but we, I mean, we just saw at another university in South Carolina where they put on a drag show, and there was um, a student organization that put out a really uh, uh, awful letter damning the, the, the drag show. You can catch the rest of it on our YouTube, so don't worry, don't fret over that little teaser. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Will Kronsberg, who is also there for the making. <laughs> <laughs> and you can catch that episode and all of our episodes of The Buzz this semester on YouTube. My personal favorite is when I get to slap Zane in the face. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, I think my favorite episode is when I had to argue with Zane over Elliot's song in Euphoria. Um, and why can... are we reminiscing? Because... It's our, our last show. Very sad. <laughs> Gonna miss it. <laughs> well, that's all we have for you tonight on the final episode of The Buzz. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at SGTV at USC. Be sure to keep up with all of our content and also visit us online at SGTVonline.com or visit our YouTube channel where you can catch all of News 4's entertainment programming. Until next time, I'm Alona Donovan. And I'm Tata Miller. Thanks for tuning in.